Welcome to No Budget, the show for filmmakers with no budget by filmmakers with no budget. I'm your usual host, Milo Dennison, and joining me today is Robert Fitzhugh. Excellent. Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> He's with the Dublin Smartphone, Dublin, the Smartphone Film, the Smartphone Phone Film, Film Festival. Festival. All right, and you are the. Uh, Organizer of the festival? Yeah, I'm the creator and the festival director, yeah. Excellent. So tell us a little bit about it. Uh, so the festival is actually in its second year now. We had a, an absolutely stunningly successful year in our first year. And essentially the, the notion is quite simple. It really taps into what um, you guys are about with no budget. It's really about kind of um, showcasing the best and brightest of um, smartphone filmmakers around the world, kind of showing audiences exactly what you can do with their phone and kind of hopefully inspiring people to look at their phones differently afterwards and kind of go out and say, you know what, I don't need to know everything about cameras, I don't need to know this, I have a phone, I'm familiar with my phone, I can go out and make movies myself. Mm -hmm. And then, and that is why you decided to go with phones versus cameras or anything yes. like, you know, uh, when you were thinking about... Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a, a filmmaker myself mm -hmm. and uh, I found that I relied on my phone an awful lot, um, uh, particularly especially started off with photography and stuff like that. I used my phone for everything and I was very, very comfortable with my phone. And gradually as I went along, I started using kind of more and more apps for filming and, and, and kind of adding in and then I started kind of incorporate the entire workflow onto my phone and then I realized one day I, I, I produced a film for a friend of mine and I was shopping it around uh, to numerous festivals and I came across a, a beautiful short that someone had done in India where they'd they'd used an app and they'd shot a top uh, stop motion animation mm -hmm. and the minute I saw that it changed my perspective of what I could do with my phone and then after that I said this is the way I want to go and um, because I was so comfortable with it and I started making content on my phone I started shooting movies on my phone submitting to festivals and then I realized that you know there was a huge community of filmmakers out there doing the same thing and I felt that you know they needed to be their work needed to be shared and yeah people need to be talking about it so how do you verify a person shot the film on their phone it's a good question there is a questionnaire mm -hmm. um, there's a questionnaire I fill out um, at the start which kind of gives details I ask for the kind of model of the phone they've used the apps they've used when they made it generally you can gauge you can kind of tell a lot of times you can tell is basically because um, People are very creative when shooting your phone. As you can imagine, there's a lot you can do with your phone that mm -hmm. you can't do with a camera, access to different places, angles you can do. So you can really tell straight away. There's normally a kind of a vibrancy and an energy to the, a lot of stuff that's submitted and you get a feel that it's being really filmed on a phone. Mm -hmm. um, and for the most part, yeah, I haven't had any issues. I haven't come across anyone trying to submit outside of that. It's been very much, uh, you can tell. You can really tell. There's a, there's a difference in the style. Okay. It, and it's okay to edit the film like it, it, on a desktop or whatever. 100%. People are more comfortable. I personally like to, as I said, I like to edit entirely on my phone mm -hmm. in-house and then, and then run it off. But yes, it's, the conditions are basically you can shoot on a phone, but you can edit. You can use any external uh, software on Premiere Pro, Final Cut, if that's what you're more comfortable with. Okay, great. A um, uh, question for you then, do people use, because I know that there, there's attachments and stuff too, like is that allowed for like if I have some kind of a lens attachment, yes, the, the trick is as long as it's shot as on a phone? As long as it's shot on a phone, you can, you can supplement that, you can use whatever surplus equipment you need. Are there quality issues? Cause, in I terms mean, of do, what? Yeah, well, because well, I'm kind of a camera snob, right? So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, well, if I'm going to put my, you know, 5D or Sony A7 up against a phone, I'm going to expect that you know, my, you know, fancy camera that costs three grand is going to create a better film than, you know, my phone. When you say my create a better film, you mean create a better image or create well, a better well, film? Well, that's create a better image. Well, yes. generally what I find is, is, and one of the reasons I started using my phone, one of the reasons I encourage people to use their phone is because, as they always say, if you have a really good story and you have a really good, uh, you know, you, you've got a really good idea and you've got a really good story, and as they always say, you've got really good audio. Mm-hmm image doesn't really matter. You can always pass an image off as a, has a, a stylistic choice if you want. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times uh, the quality image you're getting is, 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 I mean, they shoot 1080p 4K. So yeah. in terms of the quality image you're getting, you're not going to see that much difference. You might see a difference in terms of kind of like you don't have that sweet 50 mil prime lens that gives you that kind of yeah. look and stuff like that. But generally the content that's being filmed matches the device that it's being filmed on. Okay. So it's not you, you, like some of the submissions we got last year were phenomenal mm. um, and some of them really pushed the limits of, of what you could do with a phone and where you could go with a phone and I think that's the trade-off okay. is that you mightn't get that as you're saying that 5D image or that w with a lens mm -hmm. but what you're getting is something a little bit different uh, it's something a little bit kind of crazier and it's something if anyone's seen Steven Soderbergh's Unsane this year that was shot no, I, entirely I on the phone it, but, uh, but that even it, yeah. that and mm -hmm. what he did there was he used 
the format that he used using a phone really matched the, the style of the story he was trying to tell. So there was a lot to do with kind of, uh, because it's such a wide frame, there's a lot to do with, the, and the story's a lot to do with like, kind of paranoia and things like that. And there's so much frame to look at and things like that. And he was able to put the camera in kind of bizarre places that really threw the audience off kilter. So that's the kind of trade off. And I personally, the reason I'm not a, an equipment snob, I was never one of these people who was like, I found when I was studying film that there was sort of a, people were caught up in sort of an equipment arms race, if you will, and they were very much concerned with, hey, you'd walk in the room and you go, I got this camera, and then someone else would walk in and be like, I got this amazing camera. And people, I felt that people were so preoccupied with getting the best quality camera they could get that they were kind of forgetting the fact that you need to really sit down and have a really good story and a really good yeah. idea. And you know, if you can nail that to the format that you're using, then it shouldn't really matter mm -hmm. about the image quality. Yeah, it's a, it's a valid point about you know, uh, equipment snobbery. Yeah, uh, which I've experienced too. You know, it's like, oh, well, that's that's the old five D. That's not the you know, new and then you're 5D like, oh my god, my movie's not going to be great, great because yeah. I have the old five D. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I I found I just couldn't get on board with that mindset. Mm -hmm. But I found that once I started using my phone, that eliminated all that, and I was really able to nail down story. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to say, hey, I can now write scripts on my phone. I can now edit on my phone. And suddenly everything was in house and faster, and there was a speed to it that I really really liked. And that's yeah. the kind of stuff that and I'm And you were saying you pretty much do everything on your phone, right? 100%. I, there was a point when it really clicked for me was, as you were saying, when people submit, can you edit? I used to still shoot a lot of my phone, but I'd still have to transfer it onto my laptop and then edit using Premiere Pro. And that was always a real blocking point for me. And then I went to MojoCon one year and I, I, I was talking to a bunch of uh, Mojos and they, were, they kind of shared some of the editing apps we were using. And one stat... I had the editing app that was like the missing piece of the puzzle. So mm -hmm. now I just do everything. So I would write a script on my phone. Wow. I would shoot it using Filmic Pro. I would then edit it using um, uh, Kindmaster because I shoot on Android. There's this amazing app that's just come out that's uh, it's called All Right Creative. It's from the guys who made Kindmaster. It's essentially like After Effects on your phone. You mm -hmm. can start masking images. Oh, wow. You can drop stuff in behind it. It's really, really easy to use. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got the whole back end process as well. You can then market, distribute, you know, you can load these images onto your Instagram, you load them to Facebook, you can, you know, send it all off. So it's all in-house, it's all on my phone. It's what very, about very simple. sound? Sound, you still need a great mic. You can't okay. get away with that. Mm -hmm. And there's some amazing uh, microphone equipment out there. I use a lot of, I shoot a lot of interviews in my uh, spare time or in my other job. So I still use kind of lavalier mics and road mics. And okay. There's amazing mics out there, but 100% you need it. And that's across the board, regardless of what you use, you need great sound. And so, would you say people should still record sound separately and in, in, in and then It depends merge. on what you're doing. So, uh, and, I, when and I, can you merge in your phone then, because you're not recording sound directly to your phone? It de you, there is great audio apps to do that. I still, because of what I do now, I shoot predominantly interviews. Mm -hmm. I shoot, I record directly into my phone. Okay. Um, I know that if I was shooting anything separately, I would still record it into. Uh, um, a separate audio mm. and then I would edit it that way but I can still drop the f you know I can load the card into my phone and I can pull it onto Kindmaster and I can start editing the audio that way but that is one part but then again it's also something that as we're saying sound is so important that's something that I would be very very mindful of yeah. in terms of the equipment I'm using for that mm -hmm. so. um, and then script writing apps as well yeah I use uh, Celtrix okay. and it was very funny because uh, <laughs> I remember I was in college years and years and years ago and they, they were teaching about Is that free on the phone? Yes, it is. Okay. And college years ago, I remember they taught you the format. You had to write a CV in a certain format. And if you mm -hmm. submit it, it's not in that format. You don't get it. And then when I went back to study film, it was kind of like, okay, you got to write a script in a certain format. And it's like, you know, you got to learn maths and they give you a calculator. And I was halfway through learning it and then someone hands me a phone and goes, no, there's an app here and it formats it for you. You can just write it in, put in the slugs, it does everything for you. You print it off as a PDF. You've got your pages and you're good to go. So, uh, yeah, I write all my scripts on that and it's very, very simple, very, right. very easy to use. And uh, what about like iPads and tablets and that type of stuff? Yeah, so still mobile. Mm -hmm. uh, we in our first year we had opened it up to uh, iPads and uh, anything mobile essentially, uh, and uh, we still second year still open for it. But I found the first year we didn't really get many. I think we got one submission that was submitted on an iPad. It was a okay. music video, um, and it seems to be a lot of people are just leaning more towards phones and not using. From my experience, the submissions I'm getting aren't really shot on iPads. But again, it's still open. We also do like a 360 category for mobile 360 oh, really? films and stuff like Great. that. Again, we got a, a good few last year, not as much as I would have thought. How do you watch the 360 ones? Uh, Put yeah. them on the headsets okay. and watch them at home, wander <laughs> around my house, knocking over things and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, so we watch them that way. You would load it and you you go. You, it, normally they send like a YouTube link or Vimeo mm -hmm. link. It's split, put the headset on and watch it. So Great. And then we're at the festival, 
we've got a kind of we had a kind of station set up where people could go on and put on the headsets and you'd be kind of there's a card that kind of shows you different type oh, of movies cool. and which one to watch and then people would vote on which one was the best one so great that's yeah. a cool way to do it yeah how how uh, many days does the festival go over I like my film festivals to be one day, one day short, okay. one mm -hmm. and done, uh, very condensed. So um, in our first year, it was uh, one day. It ran from 12 to 6. Okay. And it was five sections. It was kind of a mixed bag. I structured it a lot like um, I like to structure my favorite mixtape. Mm -hmm. So rather than have your, you'd sit in, rather than watch like, you know, 25 minutes of comedies, you wouldn't know what you were getting in the five sections you get. So you'd start with a music video and then you might go into a drama and then you'd go into oh, a okay. documentary and then it was so. And really it was to give anyone who was in that uh, 25 to 45 minute window, mm -hmm. it's really if you sat down there, even if you walked in and left in those time frame, you'd get a really good idea across the board of what people are doing with their phones and across all the different categories. And that was kind of the idea yeah. behind it. Great, I'm gonna jump to a different subject really yep. quick. Go ahead. And just curious, what got you into filming making? Uh, what got me into and filmmaking? how long have you been involved? And you know, tell us, tell us that story. Oh, that. So I've been but involved. But keep it quick. Okay, cool. So <laughs> I'm five years old, and okay. I reach up to my dad and I go, "Camera." No, yeah. uh, I was. Uh, I've, been, I've kind of involved in the arts uh, in Ireland for maybe 15 years. Mm -hmm. And originally, I'd studied uh, arts management, festival management, essentially uh, during the Celtic Tiger when the arts was in booming, and that mm -hmm. was where all the money went. Unfortunately, when I finished college, the money it was, was over. gone. So the first thing to get taken the rug pulled out from was the arts mm -hmm. so i've kind of worked on the fringes of that ever since i've been involved in festivals i was in canada i worked in some film festivals over there uh, i worked in a lot of arts festivals over here uh, i'd always written about film mm -hmm. um, i write occasionally for film in dublin um, and i'd always been kind of involved in it I, people used to refer to me as a walking imdb because i used to just i have a real head for that sort of retaining that sort of information and um, but I'd always wanted to make film mm -hmm. but I was always again one of the things that stopped me from doing it was I'm just not a tech person right. um, and I was always kind of saying well I'm not a big camera guy and I'm not a big this but I really want to go back and learn and one thing I thought I would never enjoy was editing because mm -hmm. I'm very kind of you know I need to do things quick and editing was the thing I fell in love with straight away and I remember at the time my uh, I, I remember one time I was editing and I, I was listening to the same audio clip for four days and I kept going to my girlfriend does this sound different? Does this sound different? And she's like, just stop it. <laughs> but you know, you're lost in it. Yeah. But I did that, and so I decided I would go back and study. So I went to um, Pulse College, and I, I did a diploma in, in film studies, really just for myself. And the first day I was sitting there, and they were telling us what we were going to do in the course, and they were telling us how we're going to learn to market films and all this sort of stuff. And I remember I got very excited about my festival background, and mm -hmm. that's when it kind of clicked in. And gradually, as I was learning a lot about film, and I was learning a lot about cameras, and I, I realized, you know, I don't need to know cameras because you know that's what a cameraman's job is and I just like I do know cameras I know my way around a camera I can yeah. use one but I was not a tech guy so I wasn't it didn't excite me you know what I mean but I, I found that I, uh, it's a very long process to make shorts and we were making shorts and it took very long and someone would have a great idea and I found that you know I like things to be done quickly it was a reflection of mine and that's kind of where it went and, and and I just couldn't I found myself looking at people using cameras and stuff, and I said, this doesn't feel like something that's for me. You know what I mean? I gotta find something that suits me. And that's kind of when phones fell in. And then you took that and you combined it with my festival background and my experience working in festivals and running festivals. And then I looked at the festival landscape in Ireland at the moment. I said, there's a gap here mm. and there's stories that are being underserved. And that's kind of the way I went with it. Okay, we're getting ready to wrap up here. So first question, like when is the festival? So the festival uh, was, the first year's festival was at the end of January uh, this year, so next year it is the 26th of January. Okay, and uh, how can people find out about it? You can find us on uh, our website, which is DublinSmartphoneFilmFestival.com, which is incredibly long in hindsight, uh, or uh, you can find us on social media under DubSmartFF, and you can uh, predominantly submit, everyone seems to, true film freeway. Yeah, that seems to be the popular Easiest way to do it, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, entry information like uh it's all there uh, on the site it is uh, we charge a small fee uh, for entry I think it's like six fifty seven mm -hmm. euro um, and then the stipulations are there in terms of what we were talking about before in terms of the kind of equipment you need to use you need to fill out a small questionnaire it's like five six questions um, and then uh, submission and then submission date closes December 1st December 1st yes. so have you have you have your film in. <laughs> I saw the cameras over there. Have your film in by December 1st, shot on a smartphone or a tablet, uh, possibly a laptop. Yeah. 
Well, it is mobile, but that's not it. Yeah, yeah. By, so are cameras, essentially. I want to see, but, uh, some, want to see no, somebody hauling we'll around just, their yeah, laptop yeah, making yeah. a film. We'll just keep it to phones and, and, and tablets uh, for tablets. now. Uh, perfect. Uh, anything else about the festival that you want people to know? Uh, no, there'll be more details announced soon. Last year was in the generator, um, and this year we're cooking up a few crazy ideas to tie in with the type of content people are shooting. Okay. So there'll be more announcements on that on uh, social media and our Facebook page. Great. Well, thanks for coming on to talk to Perfect. us. Perfect. Uh, Thank you very much. Best of luck. I'm glad that it made it to its second year and hopefully many, many years in the future. Perfect. Thanks so much. Thank thanks. you. Mm -hmm. And with that, we are going to call it an end. Did, what I came up with an outro like a long time ago, and I don't remember what it was. All right. Well, anyways, goodbye. Goodbye from no budget.